Hi, and thanks for watching. I've had a couple of requests after my installation video on the zero clearance insert for my KPEX for some additional information on the stand that I have the KPEX on. This stand actually came from a plan from Woodworkers Journal, and I made just a couple small changes to it. I've included a link to their article and plan on my site, uh, and the link to my site is in the comments of this video. It's worth checking out if you plan to build something like this. When I started building this stand, it was actually for a DeWalt miter saw. That was my first miter saw, and it ran great for quite a few years. My only complaint was it threw dust everywhere. Short of putting it in a collection tent, I couldn't do much with it while it was on the DeWalt stand, which was basically just a rail on some legs. So I figured I'd build a cabinet, get some extra storage, and have a place to build a shroud around the back if I needed to that could easily roll with the saw. About two-thirds of the way through that process, uh, the DeWalt gave up and I was forced uh, into getting a new miter saw. When I looked at the Capex previously, I couldn't quite justify going with it since I had an otherwise working miter saw, but um, since I no longer did, I decided going the route of the Capex. I'm very glad I did, and uh, that's a story for a different video. The Woodworker's Journal plan called for a small electrical box in the cabinet under the saw, and installing a switch that would activate a small shop vac when the miter saw started running. I bought a CT MIDI with my Capex, and it fits under here perfectly, uh, so that's all taken care of. Would be pretty tight with a larger CT like the 26, but the MIDI's perfect. It leaves me room to store some extra hose, which I have back there now, some spare CT bags, and so on. In the back of the cabinet, there are just a few holes for power cords and the 36 millimeter hose that passes up and connects to the saw. One other aspect of the MIDI that's nice for below table applications like this is the hose comes straight out the top, which uh, seems better for a situation like this one than uh, coming out of the front on a 26, for example. I took the suggestion of the author from the Woodworkers Journal article and installed the, a Craig Precision track system. I won't go into too much detail on that. It could be a whole video on its own, but uh, it is definitely worth mentioning, and I'm very glad I have it on here. Uh, it has a nice rule on top with sliding stop so you can set your distance, uh, stick your piece up to the stop, and make very easy repeatable cuts. If you need to make a longer cut in the middle of a process, you can flip that stop up, stick your longer piece in, do your cut, and then this flips right back down uh, so you could pick up where you left off. On the other side, the idea is the same, but the stop is different. Uh, either one can go on either side so you're not locked into anything there. It has sights on both sides and comes off easily if you need to put some long stock up here. The Capex itself is mounted on a little platform. Regardless of what saw you have, you're going to want to size this platform properly for the saw so the table uh, on the saw is level with the table on the sides of the cabinet. I have mine positioned right now so that the Capex fence is flush with the side fences. You can easily add auxiliary fences to your saw and uh, then adjust the position of this, all we need to do is loosen the knobs under the saw's base and the whole base slides back and forth. We slide it back and we can tighten it in position. And uh, now I have the distance here exaggerated, but this gives you an idea of how much room you can, uh, you can get doing this. And you could easily add an auxiliary fence on here that was then flush with the fences on the side of the cabinet. The design of the stand gives you this interesting void behind the saw. Uh, it's nice on the Capex and probably other sliding miter saws as well in that it gives you space for some of this bulk that's on the back of the saw. The plan called for installing a 4 inch dust port and then piping that over under where the sustainers are and out the side so you can attach your dust collector to the stand. I was impressed with the dust collection I saw in the Capex just attached to the CT dust collector so I left that out when I built mine. I figured I could always come back and add it later um, and I haven't felt the need yet. It gives me some more space on the shelves. I don't lose it to that four inch pipe in the back. And um, I never really get much in the way of dust building up in the back. The CT catches just about everything. The cabinet gives you a ton of storage. Behind the fences, you have a good amount of space, actually about 17 inches or so from, from the wall here in my case. And that's a lot of surface space. That works perfectly for me to store sustainers and uh, it keeps everything in easy reach but you could put parts bins or something like that back there too. The shelves are great. The plan has some uh, pull-out boxes uh, that the author included, um, like drawers, but not on slides. 
I didn't go that route. I mostly just put loose pieces of hardwood in here and uh, some sheet good scraps too. On the other side, I have a little bin, a little plastic bin, with pieces for the router table, a couple table saw jigs and sleds, and some hose. The shelves are just over 24 inches deep, so you can really pack a lot in here. I have six casters on my cart. It's pretty heavy, but uh, while you don't need truck tires, I would suggest you add some fairly good sized casters so you can roll it around easily if needed. I made mine from maple plywood and solid maple for the face frame, trim, and the fence. This makes a great home for your miter saw and it's rock solid. If you have a festival shop, you get a little bonus space for sustainers too. Remember to check out my site for a link to the Woodworker's Journal, get the plan, and um, read more about the design of the cart. And if you build one of your own, uh, definitely let me know. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.